be able to stick it out through the uh, through the length of our meeting tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about the delay, everyone. Okay, so this is the Town of Winchester Zoning Board of Appeals regular meeting for Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020, held remotely on the Zoom platform, convened at 7.05 p.m. Uh, present tonight are myself, uh, Philip Allen, Hal Wilkes, John Mazicott, uh, and uh, uh, our, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Paul, I'm really messed, excuse me, John Pollock is uh, absent this evening, so instead, in his stead, I'm appointing to appointing Aubrey er English to be seated to this evening, and in view of the, our recent loss of our longtime uh, board member, Bill Hunt, who obviously is not going to be here, Paul Marino will be seated for this evening's meeting as well. So uh, just to review the procedure uh, that, uh, could everyone please mute whatever that weird noise is? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so the way that the way that this will run today uh, is we call each application by number. Uh, the uh, applicant gets to present their application. The board members will have an opportunity to ask questions. The applicant can respond. Once that process is settled, uh, we will open the floor to comments from any member of the public who wishes to speak to an application. When you are speaking to an application, please address your comments to me as the chair uh, and not to anybody else participating in the meeting. I know it's hard, but uh, especially in the Zoom platform, but uh, it helps to try to maintain that discipline. Uh, so we have five, five uh, we have a board of five tonight. That means that uh, for, if four, pe four members of the board support the motion as presented, uh, it is approved. Uh, you can you can have one member uh, object uh, or abstain uh, and have your <clears throat> excuse me, have your uh, application go forward. Uh, but one way or another, uh, at the end of the meeting, you should have uh, an answer for your project. Uh, oh, and after, I'm sorry, after, uh, after any comments from uh, the public, uh, the applicant has the last word. We close the hearing after that point. The board has the opportunity to discuss the application among themselves and then vote. And I think that that covers it. Yes. Okay. So going forward to our first item on the agenda tonight, Zoning Board of Appeals application 20-5246 for a variance at 135 Short Drive of uh, the applicant Sally Karatanuti. Welcome back. Thank you, Mr. Allen. I couldn't get unmuted there for a moment. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm presenting this application in request to replace an existing landing and front steps with a covered porch. The existing landing and stairs are deteriorating. Um, they're made of cement and rock and slate and um, they need to be replaced. So I'd like to replace it with uh, a porch that's useful and uh, I can sit and enjoy the view from and it will be safer and have some protection from the elements. The other part of my request is to add some decking off the back of the house um, because I want to redo the kitchen entrance and make that an entrance from the existing deck on the side of my house and from the backyard to come into the kitchen rather than 
through sliders that go into a second bedroom. I'd like to keep the bedroom private. Um, and that, those are the, the two elements in my application for variance. Uh, the reason for my application of, is the hardship due to the fact that my property is narrow. I can't meet setback requirements for zoning. Um, and so therefore I need your approval to be able to put the porch up. Got that? <laughs> Anything else to, to add? Um, I don't think at the moment if there's any questions okay. or okay. information. I, I, I sent it along a picture if you had a chance to look at it at um, what I'm thinking it should would look like. This is an art. This is an artist's conception, if you will. It is. It is. Okay. And it's it's a little bit of photoshopping that I borrowed from a neighbor's covered porch, and the front of my house. Any questions from the board? What's the so lot? Go ahead, Aubrey. Yeah, I was going to ask, this is a Photoshop picture here? Yes, an artist's conception. Correct. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so here you got two steps going to be going up to, uh, to a new porch here, correct? Or to a new front deck? Or front porch, I should say? Um. Am I, can I answer that question? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. Um, yes, uh, the, the existing steps and landing are directly in the front of the house. And I'm sorry, I thought we had uploaded a picture of the existing view. But um, so what I would like to, what I would like to do is move the steps to the side of the house, which would put them 10 feet closer to where I park my car, make it easier for me to get into the house. And it, by moving the steps back to within the dimensions of the front of the house, it's not jutting out into any of the um, setback area. Um, and then I think that answers that question. <laughs> Al? I'm wondering about the lot coverage. What I have from the surveyors is my existing lot coverage is 21.3%. With this porch, the, uh, the coverage would go to 22.8. So it would be a 1.5% increase in coverage. Including, you're including the deck when you say that? No, I did well, not. Oh, the deck, is, I, the deck is impervious. Is that it, the idea? Yes, that was what I understood. So the garage is no more. I, I no, that's out of that's out of the picture. That's not part of this yeah. application at all. Yeah. Okay. What's ex, it's just what's existing today, and just replace and go a little bit larger. Paul, John. I have no questions, uh, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> John was telling me that he, no comment, All John. Set. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Uh, is there any uh, th that be, we having no further questions? Is there anyone attending from the public who would like to speak to this application? Hearing none, uh, Ms. Karatanuti, you have your last word. Um, I, at this point, i be honest with you, Mr. Allen, I'm not sure what more I can say other than um, when I moved to the lake, I had bought a cottage on the other side of Shore Drive, which had a covered porch. And that was a great gathering place. And, and it's a wonderful feeling to have family and friends and enjoy the view and sit out there and you're 
kind of protected from the heat and the sunshine. And part of the drawback to the house is the wonderful view I have, particularly of the sunsets, but it's also a disadvantage because the sun beats right into the front of the house, into my living room. And so this time of night, I have to close the blinds and everything. And it would be nice to be able to look out at the view and not have to worry about the sun being in beating in on me. Um, and then again, as I said, it would just be a nice spot for my great grandson to play on the porch and for family and friends to visit and be comfortable and enjoy the view that is my biggest draw for living here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, with that, we will close the public hearing on ZBA application 205246 for variance for 135 Shore Drive. Uh, can you post the motion? Uh, so, uh, in motion, oh, no, wrong one. It's not mine. It's mine. <laughs> <clears throat> There we go. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> a motion to approve a variance application number 20-5246 for a variance from section 2.g.b.ii for a front yard setback variance of 45 feet, a north side yard setback variance of 8.1 feet, a south side yard setback variance of 31 feet, and an impervious surface coverage variance of 7.9% for the purpose of building a 24 by eight one story addition to the front of, this is our old, this is the, Yeah, this is not. Uh, this is the old motion. Yeah, I don't know if I have the new. Uh, I was gonna say that looked awfully extreme. <laughs> it's like i didn't come up with those numbers oh no it's a, this is this was from a, one of your previous applications i'm sorry yeah it's okay uh, this is this is not the old motion oh. the, only, the only thing that's the same is because i had no no idea what the front porch would look like so that's why it's still considered a with the, the side walls and the, even the three foot walls and a roof it's considered an addition not a covered porch uh huh. Okay. So the text as specified is the proper motion. Right. Okay. 7.9% is because it goes from 15%, which was what the regulations allow, even though she was at 21. Yes. So. Yeah. And I understand that. Yes. Okay. All right. So sorry for derailing that. Um, should I read the motion in full again? Oh, uh, yeah. Mr. Allen, uh, can I do make, I'd like to make one more comment. Oh, you can't talk now. Uh, well, it's just that the motion isn't correct. Mark? Sally, what's the matter with the motion? Um, you have in here a six by six one story addition on the southeast corner of the house. There's no addition. It's only the porch, the covered porch that I'm requesting on the front and just the decking. You're enclosing the, that, that six by six was in the old motion. Are you enclosing that as part of this? No, I am not. Look, nope. what happened? I'm enclosing an existing landing if that's what you're talking about. But Mark told me there was no variance required for that because it's existing. I'll go back. I, I'm just trying to pull the, it up. The motion still has to stay because of the fact you're, it has to include everything you're doing on this part. Even though it's not required to have the variance for it, it still has to be part of what the application has done. So, in other words, you're enclosing it. Otherwise, the motion wouldn't allow you to enclose it. Even though there's a landing there already. So the motion is correct. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, to restate the motion then, uh, this is a motion to approve variance application number 
5246 for a variance from section 2.g.b.ii for a front yard setback variance of 45 feet, a north yard setback North side yard setback variance of 8.1 feet, a south yard su south side yard setback variance of 31 feet, and an impervious surface coverage variance of 7.9% for the purpose of building a 24 foot by 8 foot one story addition to the on the front of the house, a 6 foot by 6 foot one story addition on the southeast corner of the house, and a 4 foot 6 inch by 43 foot rear deck expansion as per the drawing submitted for the property located at 134 35 shore drive motion made made by me uh may i have a second please a second thank you aubrey uh all those in favor of the motion signify by aye aye aye, aye. all opposed <clears throat> any abstains opposed. pardon me hal you're opposed. opposing okay any abstention So as I count that, it's four in favor, one against. And do you have your project, Ms. Garrett? Thank you, Mr. Allen. Thank you, board members. And I appreciate your time. Have a good evening. Thank you. you OK, moving on. Reason? Uh, reasonable request. All right, moving on to Zoning Board of Appeals application 205247 for a special exception located at 131 West Bakefield Boulevard. Uh, applicants are Donald and Virginia Milet or Milet. Uh, uh, you need to unmute. Mute. There we go. Okay, hi. I'm Jenny Millet, Virginia Millet, yes. Millet, okay, thank you very mm -hmm. much. Okay, um, it, it's uh, the floor is yours to explain what you're asking us to do. I have an existing fence. It's a stockade fence right now. It's on the water side because uh, West Wakefield, our property is split. And um, the fence is in sad repair. It needs to be replaced. Uh, we've had it up there for over uh, 20 years now. And um, we've had the... Um, Pleasant Valley come out and they basically said that it needs to be replaced. It's not worth trying to repair at this point in time. What we'd like to do is to keep the five foot fence. We would like to keep it stockade because it does give us privacy. It also allows for, um, you know, runoff from the road to and snow plows and snow and ice and everything else um, not getting on the land and then ultimately getting into the water. Uh, it allows for privacy and it allows for us to uh, be able to enjoy our waterfront. So that's what we're looking to be able to do. Okay. Uh, I have a question for you, please. Uh, we don't have a, we don't have a map or a drawing uh, with this um, or it was one in my packet. Is this, is your fence, uh, does it front directly on Wakefield or is it uh, running lengthwise your property down to the, uh, to the lake it runs along wakefield okay right pam has pam has a site maybe she can pull that up for us is it um are you changing anything about the fence that's already there or simply replacing what's there replacing it because it needs it's it needs to be um replaced because it's old and it's not worth repairing we're we're still going to have a 10-foot opening uh on the property um, so it's just basically, it, it's You're just run out its usefulness, you so know, you, we just so want it to look nice. It's going to be identical to what's there now, other than. That, our, our goal is to have it be identical. It's a stockade fence now. And um, uh, ideally that's what we would like. In talking to the contractor from Present Valley, he said that the stockade fence, um, given that it's by the road, um, it's going to be stronger and more sturdy than having a semi-open fence. Uh, that would not take the, the winter weather as well. So he recommended that we go with, you know, what would be considered solid, which would be, um, you know, basically a closed, um, you know, where the, the uh, fence pieces are butted up against each other rather than having a space between them. He said it would uh, 
the longevity of the fence and uh, you know likelihood of it not being damaged would be much better. What material will you be using? Cedar. Yeah, no. Any other questions for the board? None for me, sir. My, my question, I just want to clarify it to myself. There's absolutely no alter to the fence at all. It's an exact replacement of what you have, except a little different construction or whatever. How not right, any longer if, or? if you if you looked at my property right now and drove up with West Wakefield, you would see that the opening is larger than 10 feet. And that's because we had a section that we had to take down. But other than that, it's going to be in the exact same placement. The planting that's in front of it is exactly still going to be there. So it's none of that's going to change. Okay. Yeah, uh, basically just to let everybody know that the commission cannot approve a special permit with this one because they have to, she has to get a variance to have a solid fence. And I advised her that before, that if she was going for a solid fence, she would need a variance. So, because they can't approve a solid fence in the Highland Lake District without a variance. Aha. Uh -huh. So. So what would have to happen is you can hold it open till she applies for a variance. I, I'm and, sorry, Mark, but I thought that's what I did. Oh, this is for a special permit to have a fence. I told you, that's why I told you it had to be semi-open. Otherwise you'd need a variance and you never got back to me with what you were, the design you were going with. All right. So, so, so let me ask you this. If I go with a semi-open, I can go ahead with this motion. Otherwise, I need to. I'm. I'm sorry. I. I just didn't understand right. the steps. Otherwise, you. You'd have to. They'd have to either hold it open till next month, where you can come in with a variance application, and go with that one. And if it gets approved, then they can approve this one. Okay. All right. I. I. I'm sorry. I. That's why I sent you all the seg sections on the fence and regulations. You did send me that, right. and I we will go with a semi-open if we cannot have a full fence. Well, we, we're not we're not in a position to discuss that because okay. it's um, what I what I would what I personally would recommend is that we that we uh, continue this app continue this, this hearing until next month when you can come back with it in the form of a variance. With a variance application, and then we could move forward. Uh, but we can't. We can't give you that permission without the right process. No, okay. she she still oh. needs a special permit if she's getting an um, an open fence. Yeah, like let me just show you so that because that's what she might be saying, like that okay. she might be inclined to not want the stockade fence, but instead here's an example of a semi-open fence and, and it's only for the Highland Lake District. And so this is what Mark is saying mm. that a stockade fence is not allowed in the Highland Lake District. She would need a variance. Without a variance, right. But she still needs a special exception to have any kind of fence, this kind of fence being allowed. So if she's saying right now that she'd like you to consider um, a, a semi-open fence. Then we could do that. You could do that. Yes. Okay. Correct. And also, even she can even go with the stockade fence that she's talking about. She's just going to have gaps in between the the slats, like this one. Right. <clears throat> okay. So they just can't put them tight together. Yeah. Which I can't, I can't flip this one around, but this was like a stockade. I, I, I don't know why I, I'm especially. I'm standing I, I, on my head now. It looks fine to me. Yeah, right. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> okay. So let me ask you something. The fence you pointed to, is that one of those that has um, a board and then the second board is behind it a little bit and then the next one's forward? It's open. It's that open. Okay. Mark, can I ask you what is the 
um, how many inches between the boards does it need to be? Probably about two inches or so. In other words, so that it's not tight. You know, if, it, if it's an inch and a half or so, it, as long as it says semi-open semi so that it's not completely blocked off, you know. In other words, your stockade fence that you have up there now is almost at that point because <laughs> you can see through it. Yes, you can. <laughs> right. So if you, you know, a little bit wider space than what's there would be okay. Okay. When the Planning and Zoning Commission adopted the regulations, they, they didn't want folks to be shielding the view of the lake. They didn't want, so pe people who are driving around the lake and properties that are across the street, they, they want, you know, the commission, when they were adopting these regs, they want to preserve the view. They, they don't want it shielded. So they understand you, you know, to have fences for kids or whatnot, but they, they mm -hmm. don't want those tight stockade fences. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Then I guess what I'm going to do at this point in time, since my husband's not able to be on the call with me, is I will talk to him and I will probably, now if I come back next month and say I want the variance or, or can I, I guess PM get in touch with you and say, we don't want the variance. We just want to go through and we're going to get a semi open fence. We're not going to do the stockade. Then I, we would still come to the meeting next week, but I wouldn't have to do the variance. Correct. 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 Yeah. Next month. Okay. You're being... That's what I meant. That's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. This, we would, if, if this, if that's what you want to do, we would continue this hearing so that mm -hmm. we don't, you know, so that you don't have to re-notice it. Um, and uh, then you'll just be on the agenda next month. And if between now and then you decide that you do really, really, really want that stockade fence, then you can come back with a variance application. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate everybody's help in clarifying. Okay, and, uh, uh, um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, hold open the hearing for ZBA-20-5247. Uh, until our next meeting. Uh, may I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Pardon? Aye. Just, if Aye. You, the, just Aye. for the record, the next meeting for anyone who might be here is July 15th. Okay. Okay. All in favor? We all Aye. said aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you next month. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Have a good night. Feel better. Thank you. Oh my, Phil, you're doing great under distress. Oh, you know, courage you under fi courage under fire. Yeah, <laughs> liar. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. All right, it's uh, time for Zoning Board of Appeals application 20-5248 for a variance at 408 East Wakefield Boulevard, the applicants, uh, Robert and Patricia Birney. Good evening, for the record, Dennis McMorrow with Berkshire Engineering and Surveying. And uh, with me this evening is uh, Mike Bowe, our architect, and also Mark Beecher, our, uh, the builder. Uh, for the project. So the three of us will represent uh, the Bernies this evening and hopefully be able to answer uh, your questions on this application. Um, Robert and Patricia Bernie, they're, they're uh, getting up there in age and uh, uh, Robert grew up uh, on the lake and he would, uh, he loves his, his family cottage on the property. Uh, he would like to make it a little more usable and uh, uh, the cottage is only 627 square feet right now, and uh, they would like to make it a more usable family uh, cottage uh, on the water. Um, the entire structure, if you look at the survey that was done by uh, Mr. DeCara, uh, the entire structure is within the side and rear setback um, on, on the uh, property. It's not even close to, to being uh, in the uh, the building setback lines that were established, I'm assuming uh, long long after the cottage uh, was constructed on the lake. So, therefore, no expansion of this cottage could be done uh, without seeking a variance. So, we are we are here tonight seeking a variance, and the the proposal actually seeking three. The 
the proposal is to enlarge the cottage to a, a 2,100 square foot dwelling, which um, by today's standards, I think would still be in the modest category. It's not, not an excessively large uh, building. And uh, we're, we're very uh, modest on our, our building coverage and our impervious coverage uh, on the property. So the, the three uh, variances that would be required for this um, expansion addition to the, to the building would be um, 2.g.b.ii, uh, the side yard setback on the, on the west side of the property. And that is, uh, if you look at the, um, the uh, insert A, uh, the, we blew up that section of the building and you can see that the building is, the existing building is only 0.7 feet off of that side property line. And it goes up to 1.4 feet off of that side property line. And when we project that line back with the, the expansion, will be two feet off of that side yard setback. So it starts at, the addition starts at 1.4 feet. So it's a 33.6 uh, side yard um, request. And the same is true on the, the rear property line, section 2.g.b.ii, the rear or the lake setback where the existing is 4.3 and our proposed is 3.4. So it would be a 31.7 uh, foot variance request. And then Again, in that insert, Pam, if you could, if you could slide the, the screen down a little bit so we could see that insert A or go up, I guess up right there. And if we could move it a little to the right, perfect. Uh, we do have a, a proposed balcony um, deck. It's, uh, it's cantilevered on the second floor of the structure. It's shown there in the dashed lines. Thank you for the, the pointer. And uh, that's a, a modest size deck. And we're, we were gonna just drop a plumb bob down to the face of the lake wall, which would be a twenty would require a 20 foot um, balcony deck setback um, per section 2.g.d.iv.b, 20 feet for the deck uh, um, to, the, uh, to, the, to the lake. And so it'll be right on the, the face of the, the lake wall. Uh, the patio um, around the, for accessing the dwelling, we're gonna do that all with permeable pavers. I added a, a, a paver detail uh, to the plan. Actually, I can run through quickly the, the memo that Mr. Melanson uh, prepared on June 10th and we modified the plans um, with the comments. Uh, we did add a zoning table, item number one. Uh, it's in the upper right-hand corner. And in that same area, we, we uh, put a chart of what we used for the impervious cover on the lot, uh, each item. Uh, we did show that the, uh, it's on the map, there was a garage that was partially collapsed. I found out from uh, Mr. Beecher uh, this evening that that garage did eventually get removed. So my impervious cover is actually a little conservative with the, uh, the 357 square foot garage that's removed. So that would make the coverage smaller, uh, but that's detailed on the plans. Uh, on that insert A, we added all the dimensions of the existing and the proposed buildings. And that matches the architectural plans that were submitted uh, on the property. The masonry wall, that's, we need that for the grade change where the uh, building is going back into the ground. Uh, that wall is only gonna be 1.7 feet high, uh, less than two feet in height. And we added uh, a note on the site plan with some spot elevations on that also. Uh, the, all the patio, there, it was confusing on the original plan. Uh, Mr. Melanson pointed out we couldn't tell we had it marked as deck and patio. And uh, so that main level, the ground level is all patio and it's gonna be all um, pervious, pervious pavers. And we, we have that detail on the plan now for that. 
And uh, the only deck would be the, that upper deck that we just spoke about. And uh, Mr. Bo added different elevations on the uh, building elevations. And uh, we, were, we tried to put notes on the plan to distinguish where we're uh, removing um, the uh, north side of the existing dwelling and it's gonna be rebuilt with a second floor. And that also shows on, on Mr. Bo's uh, plans and, and elevations for, for the property. Um, so again, the, the, the hardship is that the, the, there's absolutely no expansion that could take place due to the, the very unique situation where the, the structure is just nowhere near building setback line. Sometimes we have a structure that's part in the building area and part in the, in the setback and, and variances are requested, but this 100% uh, of the existing structure is is uh, in the not in the uh, buildable area of the property and and therefore we're we're here seeking this the variance with the commission tonight so i'd be happy to answer any questions or if if mr beach or if mr bow has anything else um that they'd like to add uh, questions i do not at this time thank you I do not at this time. Thank you. Uh, does anyone on the board have questions? You need to unmute, Hal. Unmute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious about the coverage. I couldn't really see that chart. For our impervious cover on the lot, we have uh, we have in the in the zoning table, um, the original, the existing is two point three six percent, and the proposed is three point six eight percent, where fifteen percent is the allowable, and that three point six eight percent would get a little bit smaller because that detached garage is is gone from the property that and that's just showed on the original Becara survey and and I uh, I added it in those in the coverages so it'll be less than the cover the impervious coverage will be less than the 3.68 percent Was there any consideration giving to potentially maintaining the structure as a boathouse and, and putting the house, I mean, this is an, an enormous lot by lake standards, and we're, we're going through all these different variances with setbacks because it's on the water, literally, and, you know, you've got all this other land. I will, I'm curious about, about why, if we're going to build something this large, it's not better positioned on the property. Uh, that was, there was discussions on that and it's um, just Mr. and Mrs. Bernie's um, hope um, that they can have the, their, their family structure that's right there that Mr. Bernie grew up with and, and uh, um, for that and, and not have to leave it as a boathouse and, and build, build another structure farther up. And you're actually removing half of this, right? That's existing? Correct. Who else on the board with questions? I don't know, I'm kind of interested in uh, Mr. Marino's commentary with all of that land, why we're where we are. Well sentimental value to the existing structure apparently if was that is that a fair summation it is but it really has uh no bearing on our guidelines you know it's just so 
absent any further questions, uh, are there anyone from the public who would like to speak to this application? And I see, uh, I think at least three people who might want to. Uh, my name is Robert Fisher. Uh, ah. I'm here. I'm here on behalf of uh, Mark and Merrill Mandel, but I'd be happy to wait until other people have spoken their piece. Um, go ahead, sir. Okay. And um, Mr. I'm sorry, I'm an attorney with Kramer and Anderson. And, and I'm, I'm glad you're having a virtual meeting because I don't have to wear a mask. <laughs> and um, Mr. Mandel is uh, on, on the, on the uh, meeting virtually. <clears throat> and uh, we, when I speak of we, I say Mr. and Mrs. Mandel and I have had some concerns um, some of which are legal, some of which are more um, practical. And Mr. Yeah, Marino, can you, can you state the address of the Mandels so we know what they're, where they are in relation to this? Mark, you can speak up, but um, Mr. Mandel and uh, his wife live at 408 East Wakefield. Uh, we're, we're at 410. We're the property just south. Uh, if you go to the, if you go to the um, Dakari survey, um, our names to the south on it. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, and, or and adjacent, I guess is the way to say it. Some of the comments that were made about the previous application suggested there's concern uh, in the land use office about large um, fences and structures that would block the view of the lake. And Mr. Marino's comment was right on about the, the, this particular structure being right on the water uh, and with other uh, areas of, their, of the uh, uh, property available for construction. It doesn't make a lot of sense to build a, a large <laughs> two-story structure right on the water, which will obviously block the view uh, for a number of people, including the Mandels. But from a legal point of view, I'm a little concerned. The application deals with the setbacks and those setbacks are set forth in sections 2GB uh, and 2GD. But what I'm more concerned about is the section in the regulations that deals with non-conforming buildings. Obviously the existing building is non-conforming. It's right on the water and uh, it, it does not comply with the setbacks for the, from the lake or from the sideline. And if I may, I don't, I'm not trying to lecture, but section three C4, which deals with non-conforming structures says, no non-conformities, sorry. Uh, oh yeah, no non-conformities are created or expanded except that a second floor may be added above an existing first floor, and here's the important part, utilizing the same footprint. Now, I'm not an architect, I'm not an engineer, but the plans that were submitted, in particular, <coughs> site plan uh, prepared by uh, Berkshire Engineering, uh, seems to indicate that the existing structure is going to be removed and then rebuilt with a rather large addition to increase the floor space from the 627 square feet up to 2,100 square feet. And I don't, based on what I've seen, I don't think that uh, that is possible without a variance from section, from the section that that deals with non-conforming buildings, uh, section uh, 3.c.4. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm willing to be educated on this if uh, Mr. McMorrow wishes to, to, to do so. But um, back to the practical point of this, uh, it doesn't make sense to me to put a 2,100 square foot uh, residence uh, where this existing small cottage is uh, when there is other land available to do it. So uh, I'll uh, uh, defer right now, but I, I'd like to be able to comment if necessary later on. Thank you. 
Thank you. Who would care to speak next? Well, I mean, I'll speak, Dennis McMorrow, for the record. I mean, that's why we're here seeking the variances. Uh, Mr. F Attorney Fisher said it's not possible without a variance, and, and that's why we have applied for a variance for the structure. Well, I, if I may respond to that, Mr. Chairman, I think the variance application should have included a variance from the requirement regarding non-conforming structure, uh, which it clearly does not. I'd like to call on either Ms. Perez or Ms. Perga. Ms. Perez, Mayor Perez, please. Oh, hi, uh, Candy Perez, uh, 605 West Wakefield mm -hmm. Boulevard. For the record, I'm also speaking for myself for, and for no one else. Uh, just to be very clear on that. Uh, my concern as always with these things is that regulations have been made uh, through an updated, the town took a long time to update a lot of the regulations, uh, the 20 foot from the lake, uh, et cetera, et cetera, for impervious, uh, for housing, uh, for just about everything. So my concern is, I, I know on the boathouse, there's also been I said, I think it says on the plans, a dock, but from the water, it looks like a little deck that would never have been allowed at any recent point because it's like literally in the water. And I understand the grandfathering of, of the little boathouse. I'm not sure about the, if it's a deck or if it's a dock onto the right of it. And then like uh, Mr. Fisher said, and others have said with the amount of land that is in the background is, in the, is on that lot. If, it, if the new addition couldn't go you know, backwards, at least some, some ways away from the lake, which would leave some buffer area uh, for the water, because as the water gets more and more, more of us encroaching on it, we really need a lot more buffers. So um, again, I'm, I'm just concerned as our most with the, how close it is to the, to the water. I know a lot of people are close to the water, you know, around the lake and stuff, but I think when you have different options and there's feasible and prudent alternatives to it, I think that um, the commission should take a look. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, Ms. Perga. I think you need to unmute yourself. Sorry, I was just saying I'm I'm observing tonight. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Don't want to put you on the spot if you don't want to speak. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else from the public who wishes to speak to the application? So we can well, turn. Uh, Phil, just to uh, yes. respond a little bit to Attorney Fisher's statement is that if you look at uh, our regulations, under 4H, it says a special exception is obtained in accordance with section 6B of these regulations, which 6B says you're allowed to expand a second floor. Um, so the special exception would have to come after this variance is granted to be able to allow to take down that non-conforming part and expand the second floor. But the first part they have to get is the variances to be able to do the expansions. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any further comment from uh, the public? May I comment? This is Robert Fisher again. Uh, yes, Attorney Fisher. All right, I, I'd like a clarification then as to why a variance would not be required for uh, what's what's being proposed. Why wouldn't a variance be required for uh, from the the non-conforming uh, structure portion of the regulations, specifically section 3.c.4b, which says, as I said earlier, no non-conforming conformities, no non-conforming uh, sorry, no non-conformities are created or expanded except that a second floor may be added above an existing first floor ex utilizing the same footprint. And what's being proposed here is a huge expansion of the footprint. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm willing to be educated, but I don't understand the reason for, the, um, uh, for that uh, last comment. Thank you. Okay. We got the variance granted. That part of the structure would be not be non-conforming anymore. The part that they're adding on would not be non-conforming. So in other words, they can't just come in and say they want to expand a non-conforming structure with the addition without having to go for the variances. So if the variances are granted, then it's not a non-conforming structure where the addition is going because it's granted by a variance. Well, except the variances being requested only deal with the side yards. They don't deal with the, um, the section that I cited about non-conforming buildings. Right, because the additions would not be non-conforming and it's not, ex if they're going for a variance for that, to me, it's not, they're not going, they're not adding to the non-conforming structure. They're making it a non-conforming addition or a conforming addition to a non-conforming structure. So they're not actually, in other words, what that section says, you can't expand a non-conforming structure outside the existing footprint. But they're going for a variance to make it a, con a conforming addition onto a non-conforming structure. I, I understand what you're saying, but I think the uh, the application should have requested a variance from the section that I cited that deals with expanding a non-conforming structure. I, I'm well, not, you have the right to disagree with me, and there's a legal process to go through it if you if if you don't and, agree. So, and I believe in dealing with situations like this at your level, at the commission level, rather than um, going right. to court. We, we, we respectfully disagree with each other. That's good. Very well. Any other comments from the public on this application? In that case, uh, the, uh, uh, the applicants have the last word. Uh, if you would like to, any final statement. Mr. Chairman, I, I do not have any additional comments. I think everything's been been stated uh, for the record. I don't Thank know you. if Mr. Beecher or Mr. Bo have anything additional. Uh, this is Mr. Beecher. I, I just, uh, as far as asking for the variance to uh, build on, this is their, their dream. Um, Mr. Bernie is uh, elderly and this is his dream we did discuss as Dennis had mentioned we did discuss built up uh, in the area that wasn't regulated and his dream was to see if it would be allowable to do this and uh, that's really hardship because they've got a building and they're they're stuck with it um, because that's that's where it is so um, the front part of the building the part that is over the water has been um, repaired, rebuilt, all, uh, all permitted. Uh, anything that we've done there, we did go through the proper processes and, and the proper approvals for everything there. So, so really it's just their dream to have it there. And as far as view, and, uh, and Mark can correct me if I am incorrect, but as far as blocking of view, uh, especially from Mr. Mandel's area, um, beyond that side is um, uh, the property of the Lees and a large ledge outcropping that you cannot see um, through or over anyway. So I, I didn't think it uh, obstructed his view, but he can correct me. I, I may be incorrect, but I, I, I didn't think it did. So, but so that was the hope of the Bernies and we were trying to represent them and good faith to see what would be allowed uh, by the, the committee members. So, so thank you. If allowed, I'm happy to chime in. Sure. Um, it's technically out of out of the moment. If I'm sorry, uh, but okay. um, Phil, you should you should allow I, testimony. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Please go ahead. I would only say that the um, existing property, which is 
um, grandfathered in is already blocking uh, the view and wouldn't have been allowed in the current uh, zoning. So to add to that, make it bigger and taller only makes it less um, in step with the character of the lake. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? In that case, uh, we will close the public hearing on variance application 205248. And we will take the motion, the motion to approve variance application 20-5246 for a variance from section 2.g.d.ii for a Northwest side yard setback variance of 33.6 feet, a rear yard setback variance of 31.7 feet and from section 2.g.d.iv.b for a 16.8 foot variance to allow a deck or patio from being no closer than 20 feet from the lake shore or retaining wall for the purpose of building a 25 foot one inch by 20 foot two story addition with a 14 foot by four foot four inch jog and also a second story deck of seven foot six inches by six feet as per the drawing submitted for the property located at 408 East Wakefield Boulevard. Uh, I am making the motion and we need a second. 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 Thank you. Uh, any discussion from the board on this motion? I, I, I stand where I was before. I think with all of that land, um, I would find it difficult to, you know, allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Anyone else? In that case, I will call for the vote. All those in favor of uh, the motion signify by aye. All opposed signify by nay. Aye. 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 Uh, any abstentions? Hearing none, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, the the <clears throat> the Binnies, Binnies do not get the project as presented. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Okay, moving on. Uh, under old business, we have none on our agenda. We have everyone has had the May 26, 2020 regular meeting minutes. Are there any corrections of fact? Hearing none, we will have a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve minutes as presented. All second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? <laughs> well, That's right. Abstain. You weren't here last. You weren't here last, last month. I'm yeah. you're right. So one abstention. Uh, any correspondence of note? No. Any. Uh, any other business? All I'd like to mention is that I just, uh, I, uh, I regret that we no longer have Neil joining us. Uh, he gave years and years and years of devoted attention to this board and uh, it, was a, it was a great commitment, uh, a great, great service to the town. Uh, any discussion with Mr. Melanson? Hearing none, then we can entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you all, everyone. Thanks. Aye. I'll hear from you about documents and all when the time comes, right? Yep. Thank, Thank you. Th yep. Thank you. Good night. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank Good you very night, much. Everybody. Good night.